Hi folks, uh, let's look at how to add an assignment to your Moodle course. I'm sitting in my demo course as you can see and as always step one is going to be let's turn that editing on so that's at the top right. Turn editing on and all those little pencils should appear. I'm working on chapter two and I want to add another assignment in chapter two. I've got a couple there that I've used for some other videos. So I'm going to use the add an activity or resource link inside of chapter two. I'm going to hit that and it's going to give me all of my options. I know I want to add an activity. So I'm going to pop over here and here are the choices I have. And I'm just going to hit on a, or talk about a couple of them briefly. Assignment is what we're going to use today. Uh, an assignment allows a student to type in a text box to type a response to you. It allows them to upload a file. So that might be an essay they've typed, a Microsoft Word file or an Excel file. Uh, it might be a picture. That, that is where you would do that. The second most common is probably the quiz, which is over here. A quiz. Uh, literally builds a, uh, lets you build a quiz in Moodle and there will be a video coming on how to do that or several videos because there's lots of different things you're going to want to know. And at some point we're going to get around to talking about H5P. H5P is an external tool that's kind of cool because you can build interactive videos. And forums, uh, if you've ever been on a forum on the internet and I'm sure you have, uh, you can build a forum where your students then have to respond in order to, and you can grade their responses in there. They can uh, talk just to you or it can be a forum where they share with everybody in the class. So let's tip for today, do an assignment. So I've hit assignment and here it comes. I get to set a name for that assignment. I'm going to call it sample assignment. And this is the one time I keep saying, you know what, don't do description. Um, description is where you're actually going to give your, your students their instructions. Here's what you're going to do. So there are choices in here, but you're fairly limited with your formatting in Moodle. Know that you can also embed in here. You could embed a Moodle or a, not Moodle, a Google Doc or an Office document. You could embed a PowerPoint. You, the same as you embed on a page, you can embed in an assignment. So if you want to put a slideshow in there that, that acts as notes and then also gives instructions to your student, you can do that. I'm going to keep this more simple and I'm going to tell my student, um, click add submission below and then answer. And what shall we ask them? What are the, what is your opinion with regards to the video and class discussion from today? And yes, I could actually embed a video in there as well if I wanted. I can upload files, so if there's an Excel spreadsheet that I want the students to use then to, uh, to put together their response, for instance. I could put that there. Availability. If you want to lock down when they can do that assignment, you can do that. I'm going to shut that off for my purposes because I want you to be able to look at this at any time. Remind me to grade. And I hate being reminded that I'm behind, so I'm going to get rid of that. Submission types. Right now, students uh, have to submit a file. I want them to actually type. I want them to do what's called online text, and I don't want them to hand in a file, so I'm going to switch that. I can actually put a word limit in place, depending who you're working with as students. If you want to force them to be concise and think through their, their answer as opposed to just rambling, you can put a, a word limit on. Feedback types. I typically do comments. Um, and I rarely comment inline. Commenting inline means I can actually click inside of their answer and put comments inside of it. I prefer to use the feedback box that comes after that. Submission settings. This is probably fine. Sometimes I set my submission statement. That statement is just where the students have to click yes, it is their own work. Uh, I teach photography, for instance, and I make them click that to, to say, yes, I took this picture and I haven't found it on the internet and chose to use it, for instance. Um, and attempts reopened. 
I'm going to leave that for now as never, although it depends on your situation whether you want to or not. I don't do group submission settings, so I'm going to leave that for the moment. Notifications. These all default to no. I am the teacher in my course. If I set this to yes, every time a student completes an assignment, I get an email saying, hey, this is there's something to go grade. For my high school teaching job, I do that, but my students do not work synchronous. So a student gets done today, and the next student to do this assignment might be six weeks from now. So I need those notifications. If your class is working together, following a, a timeline, you probably don't need those notifications. But again, that's going to vary depending on the situation. Let's talk about grade for a second. Points, that's our normal Let's give it a grade. Right now, the maximum grade is out of 100, meaning you're going to enter a grade as a percentage. So if your actual assignment, if you're grading it and it's out of 17, this is going to force you to put it in as a percentage. If you'd rather change it and make it out of 17 to match what you're grading it as, go for it. That's up to you. Grading method, simple direct grading means you're just going to enter a number. You can also put a rubric in place. Um, depending again what you're grading rubrics are super handy when you open that one paragraph and you want to just go click 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 and it converts it to a number and puts it in the grade book grade category I don't have any grade categories set up yet we're gonna to get to that in another video as well if I had my categories set I would encourage you to pick the category and then it lands in the right place in your grade book right away and you don't have to go move things around if there are several of you grading in a course and you want to hide the grader identity, you can. If you want a blind mark, meaning you, you're going to grade it and not know which student submitted it, those are all options that I suppose matter more at a post-secondary than at high school. Typically, I've never used those. And the common module settings, this is the same thing you see for anything in Moodle. This is, do, you, do you, are you ready to release this to the course and have it visible or not? and you want to tie it down to separate groups, which we have not talked about yet or not, probably for now you're going to leave that as is. I'm going to say save and display. And there is uh, the sample assignment. What a student is going to see is um, what is your opinion. They don't see this grading information at the bottom. Obviously, that's for the teacher. They see a button that says add or edit submission, and away they go, and they can put in a response. That's how easy it is to put in an assignment. If you have any questions, please get a hold of me.